program, 708 Officially. It uh, was announced this week Ontario is uh, really putting the push on for electric cars, as you know. The incentives are out there. And now a network of charging stations announced this week. So we go to a man who will know. He's Stephen Bita. He's president and founder of Golden Horseshoe Electric Vehicle Association. Uh, joins us on the program. Stephen, appreciate you being here today. Good morning, Ted. Thanks for having me. So I want to know, first of all, the Golden Horseshoe Electric Vehicle Association, uh, does the name say it all or is there more to it? We're an advocacy and outreach group, but we're a not-for-profit. And so we support uh, local community events and talk about electric cars, show the technology and give test drives where we're suitable and basically um, cheerleaders for uh, you know, and the new emerging economy, uh, both renewables and electric cars, actually. When electric cars first came out, I'm not ashamed to say this, I guess it's all about uh, discourse and education, because when electric cars first came out, I was under the impression that you plugged them in at night, and while you slept, they charged the battery for you. So when I saw the charging stations pop up, I spent a lot of time, especially in the winter on the 401, and I saw the charging stations pop out in the on-route stops, I went... Big deal. You can't have an eight-hour coffee. Uh, but then I discover, of course, that's that's one of the things that's uh, maybe not widely advertised, that the charging stations can get your car loaded up in a hurry. Well, yes, there's different uh, technology levels, level one, two, and three. And basically, level one is, takes hours, many hours. Um, level two is your 240-volt, like your electric stove or dryer, which you would charge your car in a few hours, and then you have your DC quick charging or level three at 480 volts. So charge a car in about 20 minutes, up to 80% state of charge. So those three levels make electric cars quite practical. And unfortunately, those uh, sites you're talking about, the uh, on routes have signs saying future site of electric vehicle charging, but they don't actually have the chargers in yet. That's another story that maybe for another edition of this. <laughs> but uh, th- those sites weren't, aren't, a, aren't addressed in this round of uh, infrastructure. 500 chargers um, being deployed across Ontario is the plan here to, to help um, mitigate climate change and, and help draw some um, great jobs to Ontario as well because when you use electricity that's locally sourced from hydro, solar, nuclear, wind, and such, you're actually helping create an economic base here as opposed to importing energy from the Middle East like uh, we do presently 50% of our gas oil comes from outside of Canada. The Golden Horseshoe Electric Vehicle Association, the president and founder is uh, Stephen Bita. Don't ask me why I thought this. I thought uh, charging would be a freebie. It's not like it's expensive though. Correct. A lot of sites are are free presently. Almost all of them uh, in Ontario are free. There's a few exceptions. Um, this new round of um, infrastructure is significantly more um, robust and these these chargers will look more like a gas pump these are physically a pretty substantial unit that costs typically in the thirty forty thousand dollars for just the hardware plus installation per site so um, it's not like the ones you'll see like hotels and wineries in the Niagara region um, that I've actually project managed a couple of hundred of these all across uh, Canada and several in Niagara myself um, but these these new uh, 480 volt level three stations are are more um, more rapid. They're using DC power, and you know the more juice you pull into a car, um, the, the more cost of the, the energy, of course. So we're talking only though in the, in the uh, one to two dollar uh, range of, of cost in electricity to charge up an electric car on average. So um, it's it's really an insignificant amount compared to, to gas and oil. Um, it's about one-fifth to one-eighth the cost to drive an electric car compared to a gas-powered vehicle. So um, this is why one of the reasons that part of the climate change plan is to offer free nighttime electric charging for electric cars at homes um, because at off-peak times, um, we have actually excess capacity in the electrical grid and we actually have to typically sell it or, or actually pay other jurisdictions to take electricity off our hands. Michigan and New York State and other jurisdictions actually um, need our extra capacity at nighttime, and that costs us money, so why not give it to our residents? And so um, electric vehicle drivers come uh, January or so of next year will benefit from um, free 
or low cost uh, electric vehicle charging at uh, nighttime. Stephen, is the uh, battle for hearts and minds, when I'm not here, uh, personal disclosure, I do some work in the auto industry, When, when is the biggest challenge uh, twofold? One, the average Joe's worried about being first because they don't know um, how long those batteries are going to last. And is the second challenge basically right now the price of the vehicles? There is a price premium. Um, however, you know, like solar, um, people will find that after about five to six years, there is a payback. Um, even though you pay more up front, um, the ROI is, is positive for driving electric because there's lower cost of ownership. The TCO, the total cost of ownership, is in your favor when you drive an electric car because lower maintenance, lower energy cost. And um, so the economic argument is sound. But this is not well communicated, unfortunately. The, the um, challenge at dealerships you'll find is if they don't have dealer, they don't have electric cars on the floor. Uh, they don't have staff that typically um, understand the product very well, and and it takes a long time to communicate this technical shift in in technology to the consumer. It takes a lot of knowledge and time, and this is what auto dealers don't really have and don't really want to do is spend a lot of time. So we actually work with some auto dealers in in the Niagara region and the Golden Horseshoe and and advise them, hey, here's our our card. Here's um, our contact information. Give us a call. If you have staff um, maybe that need some training, we can help. Or if you have consumers that are, you know, curious and and want to come out to one of our meetings uh, and learn about electric cars. So when they come into the dealership, they're not, you know, bending your ear for two hours about every – bit of information. It, it can be quite onerous learning about all the benefits and the technical things around the electric car. Once you get it, you know, you become a, a real strong advocate for the, uh, the product technology, but it, it is um, a time-consuming thing. So, Stephen, when I leave here today, I'm going to be driving to visit family in Montreal. So, in March 2017, can I do this electric from St. Catharines to uh, Quebec? Well, actually, you know, I was part of the project uh, with Spun Country Highway when I worked with them. we be uh, established what we call the world's longest green highway project where we connected Canada from coast to coast along the Trans Canada Highway with level two charging infrastructure. So since 2012, you can actually have been able to drive across Canada. Um, but what this means now is that you can do it more practically. You can do it if uh, you have a more broader range of vehicles. And uh, yes, by March of next year, it will have these DC quick chargers in it. It won't be just a Tesla that will be able to drive these long distances. It will be your Nissan Leafs, and it will be um, your Kia Soul EVs and some of the other battery electric vehicles like the Chevy Bolt that's coming towards the end of the year that's um, got a lot of fans around it because it's a 320-kilometer range vehicle. So you know, we're, we're at a transition point in the industry where there's a lot more battery uh, range coming. Um, 60 kilowatt hour battery packs can typically give you that capability and uh, that, that, that's the sweet spot for the, the marketplace. Tesla has been you know, offering that size of larger battery packs for a few years, but um, getting to Montreal is, uh, is doable today in, in many electric cars, but it'll be much easier, more practical um, by this time um, or spring of 2017.